Welcome to the LNR training video for returns processing. This video will explain how to properly prepare return, enter return information in your cipher, and complete the LNR RA tracking sheet. As a very important note, be sure you understand the returns procedures for the particular account you're doing a return for. LNR has accounts across the country, and even though the cipher activities are the same in each account, the process of actually boxing up and scanning out the return and placing the return for UPS pickup can differ from account to account. If you're a new hire and you're doing your first return or if you have any uncertainty, contact Chain Sales Support or your senior merchandiser. Mistakes in the return process can be very costly. To start, if in first organizing the product for a return there are any questions about whether items are returnable, the rep should contact the chain sales support team. Returning product that is not returnable is extremely costly to L&R and the mistake cannot be reversed. So let's get started with the cipher. To properly record a return in the cipher, you must already be entered into that store in your cipher unit. From the main menu, select number 3, Order Menu. From the Order Menu, select number 2, Returns. You can just enter through the next screen. It's a good time, however, to double check the customer ID and store number. Be sure they are correct. On the following screen, enter the RA number for the return by scanning the RA number barcode on the LNR RA tracking sheet. You might not see the RA appear on your screen, but if your cipher beeps when you scan the RA barcode, the number has been entered. Every rep will have received quantities of these tracking sheets in the mail. If not, call Chain Sales Support. On that same screen, you can enter the customer RA number or return number if available. If not, enter NA. Next is the return reason screen. Select the reason that best describes this return. In this case I'll press number 2. If the return needs additional explanation, the following comments screen will allow you to better explain. Next you scan the barcode for the UPS label for the return. If you'll be using multiple shipping labels, be sure to scan each one. Then press Escape. You'll get a message to be sure you've entered all the labels on the total carton count screen that's next. Enter the number of boxes being returned. If you enter a carton count that does not match the number of UPS labels you scanned, you'll get a warning. In this case, I'll put in the right answer, one. Next screen, total carton pieces. The cipher will require you to make an entry. Here, I'll put 40. Next screen, total carton cost. The decimal point has already been entered. Enter enough digits for dollars and cents. In this case, we'll put in $10. The next screen is just a box total, shows items 1, enter to that. At that point you've completed the cipher requirements for the return. If you don't have all the information to enter in the cipher, such as cost, contact the store in the coming days to get that missing data. Retransmit the additional RA information as it becomes available by returning to the store in your cipher rescanning the RA number and UPS label or labels, and populating the missing data. You then turn to the LNR RA tracking sheet. Fill in all the information across the top that should match what you entered in the cipher. Then from the bottom of the UPS shipping label or labels, remove the thin tracking sticker and adhere it to the appropriate area on the RA tracking sheet. The tracking sheet has five RAs once all five have been used, send the sheet to chain sales support. In addition to the UPS labels, there's at least one other label that would go on each return box. A green or orange L&R label would be filled out with an RA in the upper right hand corner to be placed on each return box. 
you'd use the green labels if the product being returned is going back on the picking line in the warehouse. Some examples would be not on files or miss ships. You'd use the orange labels if the product being returned is not going back on the picking line. Examples would be damaged and discontinued or reset return product. If cosmetics are in the return boxes, an ORM label would be placed on each box. If the return product is not on files, in addition to the regular steps we just went over, there's a special step to perform. Not on files are items that came in an order, but that the store is not going to pay for because they're not in their scan system. So that special step is to inform L&R by calling or emailing customer service. You'll report the account number, store number, invoice number, and UPC detail. The cipher activities for a not on file return remain the same. So after collecting the items for the return, entering the return information in the cipher, and completing the RA form, the concluding elements of the return will depend greatly on the return procedures for that account. Those procedures will determine who might be performing the following duties, you or store personnel, but in the end the product should be scanned out as a return, a copy of the scan document placed in one of the boxes, the box is properly packed so nothing breaks in transit, the labels placed on each box, all boxes taped up tightly and placed in the proper location for UPS pickup. On the next visit to the store, be sure to check that UPS has picked up that return. And that concludes this video on LNR return procedures.